Hi and welcome to this week's Hopeful Conversations. I am Vicky Montague and I'm joined by Colette Dennis today. And now I can't really tell you very much about Colette because I came across her was it last weekend or the weekend before we were both on a retreat together um, online and I don't even know how it popped up but Colette mentioned something in the comments about having had severe asthma and in her understanding of the three principles that diagnosis had basically transformed and I think I think you said that you no longer had asthma at all yes and it was actually before I came about the three principles so this shows you we all have this it's yeah. whether we know about it a bit like gravity you don't yeah. have to know about it for it to work <laughs> yeah so yeah I, I no longer have asthma yeah. which is which blew my mind anyway I saw the comment and I was like whoa right Colette can you come and chat to me because this sounds utterly fascinating there will be people out there who struggle with their asthma um I myself had asthma as a child and both my kids um have asthma as well and are on inhalers so I know this conversation is going to be really rich for me and hopefully whoever's listening to um, so I'm just really going to hand it over to you to kind of just tell us a little bit about what what you what's happened, <laughs> what happened to your severe asthma. Right. So I'll start from the beginning. I was diagnosed at the age of two. So for all my life, it's all I've ever known. That was it. Um, and it was diagnosed as asthma at first. Um, and as I got into a teenager, it was diagnosed with severe nervous asthma. Um, was on nebulizers in and out of hospital. The, I think the worst point of it is I actually did stop breathing completely. Um, and that's when I was diagnosed as severe asthmatic. I would have it the rest of my life and would be on medication the rest of my life. So I just accepted that. I didn't have any other thinking. Specialists in the hospital said this, always known this. So I never ever questioned it. So we fast forward. So um, I'd say I was in my early 40s. So I'd known asthma my life, never, ever questioned it. So, and it was a comment actually from my husband. For, this is where it first came from. And I used to, maybe you know this yourself, always lose my me, me blue inhaler, the Ventolin inhaler. I was always losing it. And I always, as soon as I couldn't find it, I start getting breathing difficulties, panicking, I can't breathe, they need to find my inhaler, looking at getting people to search for it, get my inhaler. This day, my husband said to me, you know, um, this asthma, it's all in your mind. I'm like, you joking, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a specialist, tell me about my asthma. I have asthma, Are you off your head, sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. He said, no, let me finish. He said, you search for it, he said, I've just watched you again for the umpteenth time, search for your nailer, can't breathe. He said, and more often than not, you don't use it. You, your breathing calms down and you don't use it. Now, I wouldn't, I didn't believe this. I just thought, no. And it put, I thought, the first time in my whole life someone said it wasn't real, it wasn't true. Yeah. I was taken aback, it really shocked me like someone for 40 years had told me something different yeah. had a different thought about it so as with anything that's planted in your head I kind of got quiet and, hmm. and then the next time which wasn't long after I think the day after I'd lost it again <laughs> and I found it and then as soon as I found it I started doing something about oh I didn't use it I started and then something started happening and I, it, like I said it was before the three principles I didn't know anything about the three principles then but we had this innate wisdom I didn't even know what it was was happening I just had another question oh what's happening here then as I looked back I saw how many times I actually found it the breathing subsided I didn't use it so I wasn't just on this one in Ayla, I had the ones, the green, I can't even remember what they're called, that was that long ago, green, the purple, and the brown in Ayla. So I had like wow. quite a few, those I had to use every day. Yeah. My Ventolin was meant to be used as appropriate, and my doctor said I used too much of it because basically I didn't use it at the times I noticed, but there was a lot of times, just out of habit, 
Right. Me, my inhaler. Go through, I went through loads of the blue inhalers. Um, so I'd seen this, so I started to question, do I need it? So the times that I found it and I didn't need it, the times when I found it and I'm still, I, I hadn't, the breathing hadn't settled down and then I'd question, do I really need this? Is this just a habit with me? I began to question what I'd always been told. And more often than not, I just started not using the blue inhaler. I didn't have any plan in mind that I was going to get rid of anything. There was just no, I was just for the first time in my whole life listening to this inner wisdom, even though I didn't know at the time yeah. that's what I was doing. <clears throat> and it, I'm not saying to everybody just stop using inhalers because eventually that's what I did, but I did it. I'd say within a 12 month period, but with nothing behind that I was going to get, I didn't even know what was going to happen. I just kept listening to my wisdom off the blue inhaler so then I was just on the four that I had to use at certain points of the day instead of like three two to three squirts of each one I put them down to like one I never went to the doctors telling him anything <laughs> he just when I went I was always there he just said oh good you've listened to me fast you're not using your blue inhaler because obviously I wasn't getting as many prescriptions yeah. um just listen to this wisdom so over that period 12 months and then all of a sudden one day I just realized I wasn't taking any inhalers it wasn't like I thought right and today I'll stop using that it, it just happened naturally just this listening to my inner guidance and then year after year and I didn't even question it it's like only when I've looked back I thought oh, wow <laughs> that's it, it, it wasn't like I saw it at the time it's just over the 12 months periods just stop using it, stop using any of the inhalers, didn't have attacks, had colds, didn't have asthma with it because a cold would trigger it. Yeah. yeah. Getting nervous or upset would trigger an attack. None of these things were happening because of the, I had different thinking. And the only thing I did do, I knew I was commonly doing, is I had a story that it was my asthma. And I actually stopped saying that. I stopped started calling it the asthma and as I said it I pushed it away I went the asthma yeah. asthma and that's the only thing I was conscious of doing yeah. I was watching my own speak my own thinking of it's not my asthma yeah. making it my it's the asthma yeah actually doing that that I didn't realize I was doing at the time but the, the asthma I started saying and now well it's been over 10 years I mean I couldn't walk down the road without my inhaler I got mountains now climbing mountains without I don't take my inhaler it's like wow. I don't I didn't say I won't take it it was just a natural progression I would never couldn't go anywhere without it it was like my comfort blanket in a way yeah and then it, it just dropped off and I'd saw for myself that Oh, I don't have this. I don't have this. I don't need to go to the doctors to tell them to say, no, you don't have it. I just realised it was okay. And then fast forward it a few years, then I came across the principles. And I thought, oh, as soon as I came out, I thought, that was it. That's what I was doing. I was listening to my own the wisdom. Yeah. And that was guiding me. That was guiding me. And it was for me. This inner wisdom was for me personally. So if anyone said, oh, I'll do that, just listen to your own inner wisdom. My wisdom was for me. And I just, without knowing it, listened to it. When I came across the principles, I thought, yeah, this, that's what I did. But my hardest thing I found over the years, which when I came across the principles, to help me, is other people's story about me, about the asthma, which my parents, my mum especially, would say, oh, you have to be careful, you've got a cold, like a grown woman. <laughs> She's still saying this in me 40. She was still saying, you have to be careful, you know, you know you've got a dodgy chest, you, you know, you could have an attack. And I used to, we had a few words a few times about this. And I said, mum, I've told you, I don't have it. It's been years now. I don't have this asthma you talk about. I got really upset with her. I thought it would mean something about me. I thought it might come back. Till I came across the principles and then I, 
And then I suddenly thought, oh, that's my mum's story. Got nothing to do with me. So I had another insight. That's okay for everybody. And a few close friends, that's their story about me. It does mean nothing, nothing to do with me. It's not my business, their story. My story is for me. And I know I don't have it. And it was about two years ago when I, I mean, I very rarely go to the doctors, but I went to the doctors for, um, because I had lots of fearful thinking about the dentist. So I had an abscess, so I went to the doctors for some antibiotics for the as abscess in my tooth. And she said, oh, well, I hear you're one that we don't see very often. I went, oh my God, yeah. They don't, I was there all the time. Could, I, could we take some bloods? Because, you, you know, it's very unusual for you to come and see us. I politely declined. <laughs> I said, no, I'm fine, I feel healthy, you're okay. Well, thanks very much. Then I thought, wow, wow, they never see me. And it was like another thing that just dawned on me. No, I don't come here anymore. Because I don't believe that there's something broken about me. I really, truly feel like I, I, I kind of innocently, I mean, mum as well, got into your diagnose and someone, a, doc, a specialist doctor as well at the hospital said, you're going to have this forever. Yeah. None of us questioned it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like it's not saying don't believe your doctor, but listen to yourself. We've got this in the wisdom for us. They just know what they know for the oversee of the population. It doesn't mean it's for everybody. So, yes, it, it was. it's just a matter. When I, I hear anyone say, my anything, yeah. we can think, oh, you're keeping that. You're not going to, you're yeah. going to, that's keeping hold of you because you're making it yours. So the, if anyone asked me, the first thing I'd say is like, listen to your own wisdom. Look at your own language you're using around, like the illness, call it the. <laughs> yeah. It kind of separates you off from it straight away. It's, it's the, it's not yours, <laughs> it's unless you want it to be. I love so, that because there's, there's, so, there's so much in what you're saying. But the one thing that really jumps out at me is like, you know, you had a diagnosis and in that moment of the diagnosis that was what your body was experiencing like you know there's no we're not trying to say to people there is no such thing as asthma and that you know we, no. that we're denying that that exists because that of course it mm. exists and in that mm. moment when you were in hospital and struggling in that moment you had asthma but what mm. happens with a lot of diagnoses is that that becomes like you're saying that becomes the person it's like as you're talking the language my asthma my whatever it is it's the diagnosis becomes you or you believe mm. that you are that diagnosis and it becomes a fixed thing within your experience and what i think is so beautiful about what you're seeing is that we change all the time our bodies change all the time and doctors don't necessarily keep up with that you've got a diagnosis on your notes and it says you have this thing and so we become fixed in that idea that we have that thing. But what you're pointing to is that, that that can change in any moment because our body changes in every moment. Every moment changes in every moment. And, yeah. and that, that we all have this, and I'd love you to talk more about it for people that don't understand what you're talking about, but we all have this wisdom within us that can guide us to, to what to do in the, in the moment. So I don't know whether you can talk a little bit more about that for you and, and, you know, just imagining that there's people listening that have no idea what you're talking about when you say that you listen to your wisdom. Yeah, well, like I say at the time, I didn't even know that's what I was doing. I never even questioned any thoughts I had in my head. They were all real and what any expert told me was real. It was what I'm pointing towards this wisdom at the time, it was just a new thought, like a new thought I'd never had before of, there was a different choice here. It was another way of looking at it, like, oh, I have to use these all the time. And it's like, do I? Do I really have to? Yeah. <laughs> no, who's, who's saying this? Like, I think it's that questioning and that comes from this, place within I mean for me now this wisdom is a peaceful place and it's nothing 
you don't have to get to it you don't have to have steps to get to it or you know acquire it we we're born with this innate health and it's just letting all this fuzziness in our heads just settle just settle down without agenda i mean i didn't have an agenda then i was just curious i think it's like oh I didn't know I could even think of it another way. So even if it's just getting curious and seeing what comes to mind, you'll you'll know you'll know when it comes to some when it comes to you yourself. You think ah, I can see because it's coming from you. It's it's a truth, and it's a truth within you. Can't be changed. I, I thought at first, you, you know, that's why I got upset with my mum because I thought. I uh, keep telling a story. I would believe that a story. Yeah. But this was so true what I seen. It would. Ne- I could never go back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, unseeing it because this tr- the truth is unwavering. It doesn't change, and it is an inner peace knowing. And with this inner peace of knowing, it's helped me come o- over um, a lifetime, <laughs> well, twenty years of being fearful of the dentist. I mean, up to two years ago. I couldn't go to the dentist and I'd spent a year of pain because I was so scared till eventually two years ago, like I'd gone to the doctors with antibiotics, I thought, on wisdom again, this like a voice inside me just said, you're okay, go to the dentist. Just so I listened, I listened and I, even though I was so fearful, like I was really petrified, I knew I had to do something. It wasn't going to go away. Um, and I can eat another three principles like this time. So I'm telling myself, this is just me thinking. I'm making a story. I'm fearful about it. I couldn't see it really. No. I really. I was like, yeah, this is true though. <laughs> it's true here. The dentist is scary, scary places. And I had to go. I had the first appointment while he looked. And then he said, you've got to have two appointments where I'm going to take this tooth out and then that tooth out. And we're going to do work on one week this side and one week the next side so right, right okay do the worst one first with the intention I probably won't go back for the next one that was <laughs> in my mind I just couldn't see it <laughs> and when I first sat in that dentist chair now all the time I'm thinking to myself this is just me thinking this is just me thinking it's not scary I was trying to push myself into this is just me thinking as soon as I sat in the chair I like shrunk to being a child again like really fearful and you know I told him all the things if I put my hand up you have to stop and I I'd give loads of rules to this dentist of what you, you have to do and while when it, while he was doing it I was just in this terrified thinking and it was only when I was spitting out with the blood shaking and crying all of a sudden I was like at first I was thinking stupid thinking not, then it just popped just like oh my god I was in the story of it I was in the story I wasn't in show with a dentist like people who aren't scared they're just having some treatment that's it I was in the story in my head of torture I was in a torture chamber really yeah and as soon as I saw that story that that story in my head the torture chamber with the dentist that was scaring me that was making my hands shake and cry dentist was lovely the dentist was calm patient very patient I didn't I didn't feel any pain at all so in that moment it just went boom like oh and no matter how many times I say it was just for thinking I didn't see I was in the story I was actually caught up and it felt very real this story in my head and then in that moment I knew I'm not scared of the dentist anymore because it was the story in my head. It was never about the dentist. Yeah. It was always me thinking about the dentist, the story. As soon as people mentioned dentist, I'd be in this story, so the, which was good news because the following week, as I said, I have to go back for this side to be done with no fear. So two weeks, the exact same thing happened. The first week I was in fear, crying, shaking. As soon as I saw my story, the second week, not a flicker of a shake, wow. nothing. That's what we all have within us. But as I was trying to force my thinking on myself, thinking there's nothing here, this is just your thinking, it wasn't working. 
because yeah. I was just getting more and more into this thinking of it until in that moment of crying I just dropped into that peace that love and saw the full lightness of my story so it, it's wow. it, yeah and it's just in everybody this but I think it's you can't force your way into it but yeah. you have to be really easy it's <laughs> It is like a catch twenty two. Like when you're in a low mood, you're really, really desperate, <laughs> and that's when you put you going away from it. It's but knowing that there is this this, this like spiritual side that's got us, this God force, this intelligence. No one really knows what it what it is, but it's within us all, and it's always got us. We're always okay, and in that knowing you and keep strong within yourself you'll see what you need to see at that moment and in that moment in that chair I, I did I saw what I needed to I think I had to go through it all first you know in the panic of it all to see see it to see the story and then do the same thing the next week with no story there was just no story in my head that I'm out of pain now it's incredible, That's it. isn't it? It's, it's, yeah, I mean, what you're pointing to is this idea, no, this whatever, that we, you know, we feel our thinking, right? Mm. So if we have the, and, and, you know, I call it story too, if we have a story that is, I am an asthmatic, I need my inhaler with me at all times, or I'm scared of the dentist, I can't visit the dentist because it's terrifying, and that would be the worst thing that I could ever do. Whilst we have those thoughts in our mind, we feel that in our body. Yeah. And it's yeah. very, very real. So our experience in the world, therefore, is of, of fear and, um, you know, I've, I've got to take my inhaler around with me and I can't visit the dentist. And what you're pointing out is that we can get curious about these stories that we have and we all have them I mean crikey how many have you got how many have I got that we haven't seen the truth behind that they look really real and so because yeah. they seem so real and our experience creates that reality it's hard to spot them yeah but but something at some point leads us to get curious and I love that word it's just an it used to trip me up I used to think what does that mean how do I get curious and I don't understand what you're talking about get curious and it's for me it's just a well this feels really true to me I've got asthma that feels really true so what can I say about it is it true and hmm. and that's the curiosity that's the what is there to see here I'm yeah. terrified of going to the dentist what what's that about and being open mm. in that openness to to seeing something different that's when we can access that wisdom that you're talking about it's like our mind settles enough to allow new thought to come in to allow the possibility of something different to be seen in that moment yeah yeah and your examples are it. and it's when you see it it's so simple though. it's like it's so simple that we've not realised we have thought, that we believe, and then that our consciousness makes it real. You have thoughts that you can't breathe your heart, you nail it. Your consciousness makes you breathless. Yeah. And then you think, when I find it, I'll be okay. And consciousness makes you okay. It's, it's, it is to what you truly believe. And then it's looking, what, what else do I believe that I don't want to believe? You know, and looking there it's that like you said there is so many areas of our lives but when it comes up you think yeah is it true it's it is questioning is it true though yeah. it might like you say it was true in the past when the doctor diagnosed yeah it, it's not true now it's not true now but I don't need a doctor to tell me that I mean some people do and they'll go back to the doctors and say right test me for this yeah I find I don't need to you know it's for me now it isn't true it's also when I've come up across the principles now. Before that, I would worry it would come back. But now, now I just realise those are just old thoughts. It's just 
when they pop into my head, I just don't, I'm aware of them, but I don't take them on. You know, I just think, oh, well, that's what's to be. That's what's to be. I'm not going to go into a future and worry. I'm all right now. That's all that, that's the best thing you can say is you're okay now in this yeah. moment. Because that's all yeah. we have. At the end of the day is just this moment. I love that. So. It, 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 crikey, I mean, I spent my whole life really in, imagining the future you know imagining scenarios like you're talking about with a dentist and you know putting yourself in a torture chamber because you're thinking the horrible thoughts that you had about dentists that was kind of like me with life you know I spent the whole time thing worrying about what might happen and what I would do if this happened and you know that kind of just creating this scary life basically that wasn't happening like in that moment I was absolutely fine but my imagination yeah. took me to some very dark and horrible places about what might happen but those things inevitably never do happen no and as you and I know if if those things were to happen we would know what to do in that moment because we yeah. have this guidance system within us this wisdom this inner knowing this intuition whatever you want to call it yeah it's there for you when you need it <laughs> Yeah, not not when you're trying to think, oh, what would I do if this happened to me? Or how would I cope with this? Or how would I? Yeah. It just doesn't work <laughs> like that. It's a it's no. a moment to moment guidance system, isn't it? So yeah. in that moment when you were sat in the dentist's chair, for whatever reason, your mind settled for a moment to allow that new thought in. Oh, my goodness. I'm yeah. just creating this myself in my thinking. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it it's amazing because it, it works so perfectly. It looks real. It's like, yeah, it's you know it's amazing that the reality of it is yeah you do a good job of making it look real, look and feel real. And that's why we believe it because it does until we see it for what it really is, and then you go oh gosh I'm for it again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and again and again. That's what we do. We, we we fall for these stories. And once you know that, you might get carried away for a little while, but then you settle and think, oh, I was off on the train. I was off on that train, you know, whichever one it is. And it's just knowing you're okay now. We're always okay. And we deal with, because we've dealt with like lots of things up to now, we thought we'd never have to deal with we've got children I never thought I'd have one child alone too yeah. <laughs> they have th don't like pain and I always used to say to mum I won't be happy well, you can have children without pain don't look at me for grandchildren I went through that and I was okay in that moment my body knew what to do and I trusted it and I was fine and I came out it's just tr it's it's to remember to trust yourself because we've been kind of innocently conditioned from being born to trust the outside world put your trust in your parents and your teachers you never, and we've come out of the trust well for us first let's go to your own inner wisdom trust that place inside of you and it's not like saying don't go to the doctor it's like I had trust within me that said go to the dentist yeah. I trusted that inner wisdom and I went to the dentist you know, I wish I'd had it 20 years ago and I'd have two teeth here now, but that's, <laughs> that's, what I had to, that's what I had to see. Then I could pass this on to other people, yeah. you know, and even if they're still going whatever they're doing scared, then at least they've got that little seed of, or oh, is this true? And as soon as you start questioning it, as soon as that seed's been put there, yeah. like with my husband innocently, yeah, he said, that. it's in your head. I love that. Something grows from that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, and that, do you know, that really reminds me of the whole, you know, whether it was true or not, but the whole thing around Sydney Banks, who obviously was the, the person who kind of, I don't know, had this experience and came up with the three principles. But he, there's always the story around the fact that he, that somebody said to him, oh, you're not insecure. You just think you are. And in that moment, he saw 
that it was just thought that was creating yeah. all these insecurities that it wasn't true at all and it, it, that this story really reminds me of that you know your your husband just saying you know that it's just in your head don't you that you don't every time you reach for the like find the inhaler you don't even take it like you weren't even conscious of that no yeah. and in him just saying that to you it was like it brought that into your awareness that goodness me I he's right I think I need it it makes me feel really tight chested that I need this inhaler but as soon as I find it I have the relief of knowing that I've got it and suddenly I don't need it anymore yeah what's that about yeah. exactly it's questioning what's happening there what's my inner wisdom has balanced me breathing back we've got this inner health yeah. if you let it yeah. it will bring you back to balance if you let it <laughs> and that's what I did I didn't force it, I just allowed and questioned and just waited and it would always come back without any struggle from me. It would cause it was something something else that we're pointing to that's got life. There's no mistakes, you know, and that's that's what we point everybody to is behind the thought, before the thought what's going on there, what's, what makes me, me breathless, what made me come back to the breath when it was nothing to do with the inhaler at all. Yeah. It was just the thinking behind it. Yeah. Right Even, so now I think I'm more wow than when it was happening because I didn't really know at the time what was happening. And now I think, wow, 40 years of having it, over 40 years. Yeah. And it's, it's, I, I, I mean, I always come back to this whole thing that, you know, our mind, our body is just reflecting what's going on in our mind. And so if we mm. are, you know, it may be that we're having fearful thinking, we don't even know that we're having that. But mm. one of the, one of the impacts of that on our body is that it go our body goes into fight or flight. Yeah. And, and the, all the chemicals and everything else get affected by that. Yeah. So it kind of looks like you know highly possible to me that you can have these symptoms hmm. which are ultimately coming from your mind and i'm not saying they don't exist it's not that you yeah. create it in your mind but it's an innocent you know misunderstanding of how we work yeah our body yeah. responds to our mind yeah and the less we get yeah. into, sorry and if when, sometimes when you get something it's your body's way of saying just stop yeah <laughs> so if if you're not listening, it'll send you little signs which will get louder and louder till one day you're so ill you can't get out of bed. So you've, you know, you've no thingy. Stop. I had this last year because I was working really hard with business and I wasn't giving myself any time. And then it was just after the COVID started in April. And I've never had it before in my life. And I got vertigo. Wow. <laughs> I have no choice but to stop. And I kept trying to fight and think no I will do this but never had it it's I always thought oh it's just a bit of dizziness no it's way more than that. <laughs> it's like honestly it's like you move a bit and everything in your head goes mad yeah. and I literally had to lie in bed be very still yeah. the only thing I could do was look out the window to the birds and the trees and I thought well this is this is it this is I've not been and I saw that I haven't been listening to myself to slow down take time to myself well, then I had a week to take time to myself because consciousness is that right, lady? You're not listening. <laughs> Here's a bit of vertigo. You'll not be able to do anything. And I didn't. I was just, and I, I, I saw a lot in myself. I, you know, anything that happens like that now, I think, what's what's going to come out of it? Yeah. So yeah, I wasn't taking time for myself. You need to take that time, that peace of just doing nothing doing nothing we just think we have to do 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 um there's more in the not doing yeah <laughs> it's like, there's so much in the not taking time to yourself doing nothing and that so yeah as much as we think we know there's so much more we don't know so much more we don't know yeah i love that <laughs> and just to be to be open to the idea that you know our body when it gives us symptoms is just is just trying to talk to us, trying to wake us up. To yeah. Fact that we have whatever we've been doing, we've been misusing, misusing the this gift of thought. Yeah. Yeah. And that 
thing. That's it. It doesn't mean anything about us or or anything. Oh. It's just it's just our oh. body it's trying to communicate. And I love that idea that love letters from the body that Bill Pettit talked yeah. about. But that's so yeah, cool. and it is. <laughs> And we can choose yeah. to we can choose to hide them. We can choose to, you know, take medications or whatever it is that we we do to try and get rid of those symptoms. But ultimately, mm. as you say, all that happens then is that they just get louder, and so you get yeah. worse symptoms, and they keep coming yeah. and keep coming until you're forced to stop and listen. Yeah, yeah. And if we can. And Sorry, go on. <laughs> when you can think of it like that, it's just so different from, oh, this is a symptom. I need to get rid of it. There's something wrong. It's mm. like, no, there's something really right. Yes, it's, it's perfect. perfect. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. we're so busy wanting to fix ourselves and we want quick fixes as well. Oh, yeah. Give me those tablets. Just let me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> give me that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not. A, it's just like using a band-aid where it's going to just undo again. You just want to realise you don't need fixing. You just need to listen. Yeah. Listen yeah. to your own inner being. And we've all got it. I mean, I've heard plenty of people say, well, I've not got this. Yeah. You know, but you just keep pointing and then all of a sudden, it, you know, they see it their own way. Yeah. In the way that makes sense to them. Yeah, and that's the only way because, like you've said, it's 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 about it's about coming from within you. Like we can talk mm. to people and say, you know, oh, do this, do that, or whatever, but it's never gonna have an impact on them. What 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 creates change is somebody seeing for themselves. Yeah. How how we work. Mm. Yeah. And it's not in the words because we all have different words to describe. I could say wisdom, someone can else could say, oh, you mean common sense? Yeah, that's what that means to you. It's trying not to, we've always looked at what people say in the words, it's trying to look before the words to the feeling, the feeling that I'm trying to point people to. I think we do it easily when we are in that feeling. I notice when I'm talking to people, I'm in the feeling, and sometimes when I've dropped out or sometimes I'm dropping it out, but it isn't in the words, it's before before the words and when I heard Sid say that I was thinking what is he on you don't understand until you do yeah, yeah, yeah it's incredibly frustrating for anybody listening I'm sure. but uh, I, but yeah. equally I you know I I guess to finish it it's a beautiful place to finish just to point people to that and that people might not know what we're talking about but they actually do and I always yeah. say to people you haven't it you have this you have this, you will have had this experience of this feeling that we're pointing to. And it might be when you're gardening or when you're painting or when you're driving or when it, you're cooking or whatever, where, but those times when time just passes. Yeah. That's what we're pointing to. Because yeah. in those moments, you're not caught up in thought, you are in that place, in that peaceful yeah. well of being. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely in the flow in the flow <laughs> in the flow of life not fighting against it just flowing with it yeah definitely oh thank you so much for coming oh, and sharing your stories really. <laughs> yeah, it's, been, it's been nice sharing the story with someone else instead of just doing my own video about it it's nice to have that feedback and yeah, it's been brilliant. <laughs> oh, thank you, Colette. And is there um, any way that people can connect with you? Can you tell people where they can find you? Yeah, I'm on Facebook and it's New You Today with a capital U and the number two. Yeah. So I could send you the, the link for it. That's my group. Um, yeah, and I have a Facebook page called the same name, New You Today. So I put videos on there and, you know, different things I find helpful books of did so else's little quotes from their book which i love yeah i love El else's spittle <laughs> wow, she's gorgeous, yeah yeah yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah, well i will so, put all yeah. those links underneath so people can um click on those to find out more about you and thank you so much for coming along and sharing your yeah story. thank you yes yeah. really and i'll share the video to um my other friend in a to be you group as well she said to share it to her group brilliant so we'll you know 
was in there as well. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, thank Thanks you so much, Colette. I'll catch you well, soon. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> See you again. Bye.